thanks so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. So I was just thinking, um, Enaptor is a relatively new company, so if you could give me a little bit of a background on who you guys are, uh, what makes you special, and what you're really excited about. Sure. Um, Enaptor is an international startup, and we make anion exchange membrane electrolyzers uh, for small-scale on-site hydrogen production, as well as energy management systems. So these are our building blocks for the future of energy, and we, it's our goal basically to make these as flexible and easy to use as possible. Okay, great. And when did you guys, uh, when did you guys get founded? Uh, we were founded at the end of 2017, so we've been going about a year and a half now, almost. Um, yeah, we started with a core team of chemists that invented this AEM electrolyzer, and then we've been building the products around that since we started. Okay, wonderful. Um, could you tell me a little bit more about the AEM electrolyzer? So we know that it stands for the anion exchange membrane electrolyzer, but what does that, what does that really mean? Uh, essentially, it's an alternative technology for generating hydrogen compared to the traditional alkaline and the PEM electrolysis. Um, we think that the AEM combines the benefits of both of these. It allows us to make uh, small-scale hydrogen generation cost-effective. Uh, for one, compared to the PEM, which in terms of the operation principle is quite similar, compared to PEM, we can actually achieve this without using, relying on the uh, very expensive noble metals and expensive materials like titanium. So we can actually use low-cost materials for our stack. And then, due to the simple operation, we get high purity, directly compressed hydrogen from the stack, so we can actually operate with a very simple balance of plant. So this is what allows us to make the small-scale electrolyzers cost-effectively. Um, so yeah, brief to sum it up, basically, AEM is the best of both worlds from the alkaline and PEM. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so you focus mainly on small-scale production, um, but something that's really cool about your company is that they're entirely uh, modular and stackable. So can you tell me a little bit about how small to how big that it reasonably makes sense for you guys to go? And maybe uh, some examples of various projects that use your uh, stacked-style uh, AEM electrolyzers. Yeah, so essentially um, we want to scale green hydrogen production. And so in order to do that, we have decided to go for standardized small systems. So each of our standardized modules produces 2.4, it uses 2.4 kilowatts of energy to produce half a cubic meter of hydrogen gas per hour. Um, and these standardized modules, um, we can stack them together to form larger systems. Uh, it's a rack mountable system, so they go into standard 19 inch cabinets and we can put four of them into a standard cabinet. Um, so one cabinet, two cubic meters. And then we can actually just continue to stack them up, up to about 10 to 20 norm cubic meters per hour of hydrogen generation. Okay, so to put that into uh, maybe a more user-friendly format, two cubic meters of hydrogen per hour, what can that get me? Can it power uh, a normal single-person home? Is it going to... What does that sort of mean to me? Yeah, so we have some customers who use the uh, electrolyzers in home applications. Um, so one or two of our standard electrolyzers might be the right size for, for, for a load that's similar, equivalent to a normal household. Um, so for example, uh, the first project that we delivered with our new electrolyzers was eight of them stacked together for a four cubic meter system. And that's used in a demonstration project to feed uh, hydrogen boilers for a whole apartment building to provide heat. Um, so depending on the size of the application, we're completely stackable in, in, in just a few of these. Normally, it depends on the type of application, but anywhere from one to about 10 of these electrolyzers is typically what we are delivering. Okay, great. So the, uh, the new electrolyzer stack that you just mentioned that's now providing heating in an apartment building, um, do people live there? Can, like, can people actually move in? How did you get involved with that project? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a demonstration project for power to gas, um, and uh, yeah, people live in the apartment building, and uh, and uh, yeah, and in the winter or I guess whenever it's too cold, uh, their heating comes from hydrogen. And sorry, maybe I missed it, but uh, where it, is it located? Uh, it's actually in Holland. It's a project that was done with DNVGL and AdSensus in in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, it's it's a very nice project for the to demonstrate our uh, EL 2.0. Okay, great. Um, so I guess I. I don't know a little, so much about it, but I've seen that you have some projects that are associated uh, in much more remote locations than just in the Netherlands. So I imagine that there's some issues associated with maintenance and uh, 
checking that your system is staying up to date. So how do you at an after deal with that problem when you're in a more rural setting uh, using the advantages of the modular stackable AEMs, but maybe in a place that is not so easy to monitor consistently? Yeah, absolutely. So we started with microgrids and remote microgrids and so on, and that continues to be a very good application for our electrolyzer. The challenge is always, how do you actually maintain this? How do you, how do you help the customer if there's some problems or some questions? And in order to do that effectively, essentially, you need to monitor the system. So we have our remote energy management system and that collects all the data from, the, from, these, from any site in the world, as long as you have an internet connection, or without it, it stores it locally until a connection is available. Available. And with this data, we are able to um, help if any problems occur. We can do preemptive maintenance and warn customers if, they need, if something is about to happen or anything like this. Um, and, and this is really the important bit. And then the other part that comes in is that because we have this stackable, flexible system, if we have a system consisting using several electrolyzers stacked together, if one of them actually has a problem or if any part of the system has a problem, the rest is actually completely unaffected. And um, due to the small size of each module, it's actually possible for one or two people just by themselves to remove one module, exchange it with a new one or anything like this in case something happens. So it's also very easy to actually maintain remote systems because you don't need to have uh, a crane or anything like this to install, install these modules. Okay, great. So uh, you said that you can collect all the data. Uh, what does that sort of look like and how do I access the data? Do I need, like, is, I, I think actually you showed me something on your phone earlier. So can any consumer have that or is it something that you at an after monitor? Everyone gets it. So if you, have, uh, if you buy our electrolyzers, they come with the energy management system. And you have a mobile app to control them, turn them on and off, set the rules of when they should be operating. Um, and it allows you basically to control several units together as one larger system. Um, we also started to integrate uh, third-party devices and sensors and so on. So this enables us to do the rule-based control. So for example, in a remote setting, we could be able to say, OK, now the sun is up we are allowed to start our electrolyzers and then they could automatically do that. Um, or the customer can take the app and do it manually if they like. Um, we have the app for any platform, um, iOS and Android, and a web dashboard that has a lot more information where the data can also be downloaded for other purposes. Okay, so um, sorry for a little bit of ignorance here. You say once the sun is up, you can start your electrolyzer. That, that was an example for if you have if you have uh, solar panels connected to your system and you want to drive off solar panels, uh, then yes, absolutely. Then you, for example, the rule-based uh, engine that we have in our energy management system, you could set up to operate the electrolyzers when there is enough excess power from the solar panels, or any other rules that you were, that that are relevant for that application. Okay, so along with the integration to solar panels for your uh, initial energy source, does it fit in with other types of renewables or other types of uh, energy sources? Is there any limitations associated with your stack? Uh, not really. So, yeah, not, I mean, not really. We have a standard electrolyzer, which is run on AC power. So typically in microgrids at the moment, it's connected on the, and just as a load on the AC side. And then it's uh, controlled with our management system. Um, so... This is a very simple approach and it allows our customers, normally they are system integrators who are delivering these projects, and it, they, it allows them to very easily um, just take them, stack them together, and actually be able to deploy them very, very easily into their projects. So uh, a word that I keep hearing you use is that the person can use it very simply and it's very accessible to other people. So in your ideal case, who are you hoping is going to be using your simple, stackable, user-friendly systems? Yeah, so um, basically anyone who has energy projects where you're, looking at where you're looking at integrating hydrogen or anyone who has a need for hydrogen and other purposes. So for example, for some small scale industrial applications and so on. Um, but essentially the biggest, one of the big barriers that we see is that a lot of people are very interested to use hydrogen. There's a lot of excitement for hydrogen and it's going to come. Um, but it requires a lot of specialized knowledge in order to integrate uh, electrolyzers, fuel cells together into a project. And this is uh, actually uh, very quite complex and it's quite, it's, it seems to still be a big barrier. So we try to remove this. We try to make it really very simple to use. Yes. And what are some other steps that people can use to try to improve that integration process from other energy types into hydrogen? Is there anything you can think of um, that might be kind of ease the way for consumers to actually use? Right. I think that, of course, 
more and more renewable energies help a lot. So nowadays there's a lot of people that have excess solar power on their roofs. There's a lot of people that, there's a lot of talk about curtailed energy and so on. So this kind of interest is, is just naturally coming up. Um, and, and yeah, and as long as there's, uh, ideally people will use renewable energy, but even other energies used for, for generating hydrogen where it's needed. Um, we think that with more and more renewables, it'll become more and more, more and more obvious for everyone that they will use hydrogen. I mean, that's, I guess that's always the hope that we end up with more renewable energy and always reduce our uh, emissions footprint. Uh, so that sounds great. It sounds like you have a lot of uh, great accomplishments and your technology is sound. What are you looking forward to in the future? Are you looking for any new developments, any, anything exciting on the horizon for you guys? Yeah, absolutely. So our team's still growing very fast. We're always eager to find new talented people to join our team. Um, and at the moment, actually, our, our small production site in Italy is, is basically really full. Um, so in June, we are um, expanding into a neighbor building, and we're going to start to have a serial production where we can start to produce uh, slightly larger unit numbers and actually uh, yeah, deliver our products faster. Um, roughly, do you have any idea how long it takes to produce a unit in your small factory in Italy? Uh, at the moment, yeah, sure. It takes a it takes a week or two, um, and we can make and, and yeah. But uh, the lead times at the moment are of course much longer, and so with the new serial production, we'll be able to cut this down significantly. Okay, so right now everyone's being made uh, one after the other. So you're right. hoping that you'll be able to increase production, and uh, with this increased production or decreased production time, I should say, are you looking for any uh, cost savings to the consumer or to your business as well for scalability of producing these? Yeah, sure. That's that's definitely our goal is in long term is to reduce the cost even more. So we have a very cost effective electrolyzer solution for small scale applications now, and we think that this will decrease uh, further decrease the cost by technological improvement of the system, but of course also through scaling. That's why we go. That's why we are doing the standardized modules um, with small scale standardized modules when we can produce larger unit numbers, and of course this will also uh, be reflected in the price in the future. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, so your actual thing is in Italy, but you guys have an office in Berlin, right? Right. We have a communications office in Berlin, and it's also growing the team there. Um, most of our R&D is in Italy at the moment, yes. So all our chemists, engineers are in Italy. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, so at this point, I'd like to open, uh, open it up to the floor. If anyone has any questions uh, for Jan Justus from Enaptor, now would be the time. Um, but if people are feeling a little bit shy or just haven't thought of it quite yet, um, you'll be at the fair all week, right? Absolutely. We have a booth in D57 to, for we expand our electrolyzers. And we also have a small pod in the digital energy fair where we have a demonstration of our energy management system. Oh, cool. Where is that located? It's in Hall 12. Huh. Fantastic. I'll have to go check it out. Um, so Hall 12 to check out the demo and booth D57, which is kind of just like that way. Um, and you can go take a chat and find out whether or not a anion exchange membrane electrolyzer or stackable modular solution might work for you. So thank you so much for your time, and I hope you continue to enjoy your time here at the fair. Thanks for having me.